All right, everybody, today we're going to do some updates on a few of the animals. We're going to touch on some quarantine practices, and also I'm going to mix up some skink food, so stay tuned. Another update, we have uh, the baby pygmy pythons, or anthills. They are now, believe it or not, twice as size, maybe even more, than when they were born. Tried to bite me. That's funny. They're cute. They're bite. They can't even break the skin, really, right now. But they have attitude. Um, these guys are more advanced species um, than a ball python or a corn snake or something like that. They start out on geckos in the wild, so getting them on rodents is a little difficult. Um, you have to assist or force feed them until they start taking it on their own. Um, they have a higher metabolism, so they're going to want to eat more often. I would feed them twice a week um, if you're keeping them. And they only get to be about 18, 20 inches out of them as an adult. We showed you the, the breeder female. She was, couldn't be more than 18 inches right now. But they're cute and super neat. All right, so this is our uh, cinnamon enchi head clown female. And she ovulated on May 15th. And you can see right now she's nested. Um, it takes about 30 days after ovulation before they lay. You can see the raised spine. You can see down here toward the vent. You can see the eggs right up there. And it's, it's coiled around with the tail in the center. And today, being the 17th, she's just about to lay. I, like, sometime tonight, she's going to lay a clutch. So I just want to show you guys this. You can get an idea of what to look for when your uh, snakes are about to lay. So you can make sure you have everything prepared in advance. And yeah, can't wait to see how many eggs we get. So we're just checking in on the rhino rats. Um, I was expecting the female to lay already. So I'm going to see if there's any eggs in the egg box. Which she still looks pretty thick. So I'm going to say no. But you can see how you can see the black between the scales. That's like the body is expanding, so you can actually see the base skin underneath, which is black. So she still has eggs, but here's the male. Beautiful. They start out gray as babies, and they have the cutest little upturned noses. And as they grow older, they slowly turn this like almost teal and green. And they have this awesome nose out you can really see the blue on the sides beautiful snakes just look in the egg box real quick yeah nothing in there but soon hopefully they like to climb apparently <laughs> <laughs> where are you going all right well we'll check back in with these guys a little later maybe we'll get some eggs All right, I want to talk about a pretty serious topic. It's quarantine. So we're in a different room. Hopefully the lighting is pretty good. We're in a completely different room in the house. We have a, a little quarantine rack, and if we ever need more, then we end up having to move racks out. So we try not to buy too many animals too quickly. Um, but I'll show you a couple of animals that we have out here. And it's not perfect for what we uh, would like to do, but you know, everybody lives out in their real world and in their houses. So um, this is in a completely different room. And it affords us the ability to bring out some cool animals. Here's one of the animals we bought the other day from RL Exotics. And she's looking really good. And we'll go to the other one here. Of Calico Russo Yellow Belly. So we come out here and we only do it on a day when we're not going to interact with the other animals in our collection. Um, some people say, you know, you wash up really good, things like that, and that's great. And we think that um, the more precautions you can take, the better, just in case something that you get comes in and it's 
not perfect. Uh, it might get the rest of your collection sick, and if you, you know, have a, a pretty important collection, and even if you don't, all the animals are important. So it's really your duty to do what's best for them. And as caregivers, so that's what we do. And we have a little skink here as well that um, I don't know if you saw our other videos, but this one's really dark, looking really pretty. From Diana Mason, thank you, Diana. She has a dark line that's awesome. And this one we're hoping is a uh, female because we have a dark male. We'd love to pair her with. Woo! <laughs> She's active. So that's all the animals we have in our rack at the moment, but we keep them in here for maybe three months or maybe more depending on the animal, depending on how soon we have to move them over. Um, but at minimum of three months, we make sure that they're healthy and nothing's going on there. And if we can, we try to keep them in for six months. Um, sometimes we have to add a rack, like I said before, but we just want to make sure that you guys see the real world of what happens and that, you know, you guys take that extra precaution to do what's right for your animals. So thank you and hopefully this helped you guys out. And if you have any questions or anything, please comment below or let us know. Give us a message or something on any of our social media or if you can find my phone number, which Ryan loves to give out. Give me a call or a text. All right. All right, guys, we're going to feed our skin collection today. Uh, we've been doing uh, once a week feeding. Uh, we have our adults over here. We have the babies that we have from this year. So basically, we're going to go through what we do. I try to change it up almost every week. Uh, to give them some variety of nutrition and taste so that they can be happy. So usually I come in with a couple of scoops of dry dog food. This is Imes. Pretty good. Doesn't have much bad stuff in it I suppose. So we try to get um, stuff with bone meal added in it still for the extra calcium. But we also add calcium. We try to get um, minimal grains. We do that, but I'm also usually I do two scoops of that, but I'm gonna put in some of these. Then found nice, cool, like freeze-dried turkey stuff. I'm gonna give it a shot. It's raw, organic. Pretty cool. And this, and that's just three ingredients in that. Yeah. Yep, ground turkey with bone, turkey heart, turkey liver, herring oil, and mixed tosiferols. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Alright. Also do a variety of wet food. This is Halo brand. Not a huge fan of the brand itself because it supports HSUS, but it's got good ingredients in it. Wellness brand pate turkey dinner. All right, dump this in here. Who's the most excited in the room? Um, the dog. Dog's dog good. knows it gets to lick the bowl at the end of this, so it's very happy today. Very, very happy. Also today, as a treat, I'm gonna mix in some cooked, diced up snails from ZooMed. Skinks love them. So glad we didn't do a bet or a dare for that to eat one of those. Boil for safety. Mm, sure, it tastes awesome. Great idea, Ben. Next bet, Ben has to eat a can of snails. And also, some added calcium. So, the amount you put in is going to depend on how many skinks you're mixing up the batch for, really. 
I usually just follow the directions on there about how much you should have per skink depending on the size. Uh, four scooping or four heaping scoops. Don't only use the Reptilite multivitamin. We don't use this every time. Um, this is like uh, this will do probably. Um, since we don't use UVB, I use this every time. And with UVB, you could use this less. And I use this about once a month. And this has the correct type of vitamin A that can actually be absorbed into your reptile. So you gotta watch out for that. Some of these have vitamin A that isn't quite good. So just a little sprinkle. And then I get this into a yummy mush. What happened to the sound effects? <laughs> about how much of the Swedish chef can I do before we get sued? That is the question. We can do as much as we want as long as we all mention the name and blame it on. Well, I name. happen to be doing the Norwegian chef. So. <laughs> So we do this once a week, make this batch up. You could actually do this in advance and freeze it if you wanted to. There you have it, skink chow. All right, so for an adult skink, try to do a little bit bigger than the size of their head as a portion. So that's like an adult portion. And if you're going to do a baby, something like that, a little too much, but yep. All right, so I'm going to go feed the skinks. Guys, thank you for joining us. We're so happy that you're watching our videos and we're just beyond humbled that you guys would even tune in. So we're having a lot of fun doing it and we're hoping that you have fun too. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon and uh, that way you can see some of the new videos we have coming out. And hopefully Ryan doesn't keep hitting me all the time. So, <laughs> all right, shut thanks. your mouth. <laughs> People love the violence. Give me a call or a text. All right. 856-649-3149. I don't know if I want to put it out there yet. <laughs> I mean, it's out there, don't get me wrong, but... <laughs> I'm just bent over a table here. <laughs> I'm gonna definitely put you being bent over a table. Ben's constantly bending me over a table. <laughs> <laughs>